Right, right. Uh, Shane here at Longland 67 coming up to you with another update for Russell Goldsling's um, D-Day group build. As you can see here, um, I've come quite some way with my King Tiger, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. This is my third time trying to make this video, as uh, there are two times I haven't been particularly happy with, or I swear that bit too much, or what not. Um, and funny enough, each time I started the video, the build was uh, some way like, you know, less advanced than it is now. I had to add a bit each time I did the video, so I'm almost finished it now. So um, I'm just going to have a quick, quick update on what I've done with the build, with the Tiger. So we start with the turret, where most of the work has been done so far. So you can see, um, I haven't added any simmers onto the, the vertical surfaces. I wish I had, but um, to do so would have meant having to carve off all the detail on the side here, as you can see all the tools and whatnot. And I had nothing to replace that with. So if I carved that off, I had not, I had no, I had no um, styrene stock or anything to actually um, replace with. So unfortunately, we just have to make do with. Um, adding texture. Now this might appear a bit heavily done but um, I kind of like a nice good heavy texture on a tank as um, to me this, this build is more about fun trying new techniques as well as accuracy and to, because I can't add accuracy or I can't add the sim, the sim words, uh accuracy kind of went out the window fairly quickly unfortunately but um, the texturing on the hull or uh, on the sides of the terrace and the mantlet as well as the front of the hull here, or the uh, the bow plate and lower hull and rear, rear deck we're all done with uh, Citadel's liquid uh, green stuff which is basically squadron putty and um, I just steepled it on, hang on I'll just get the brush I was using I just steepled it on with a brush like so so this is a, an, an old brush that I cut about three quarters of it off, steep a tiny amount in, wipe or dab a lot of it off with a brush and then apply it. So um, with a few coats of paint that should look very nice and should pick up some washes lovely as well. I was very tempted to scrap, to scrap this build, or this tiger, not the build, the project's still going ahead, but I was very tempted to scrap this tiger in in um, favour of getting myself a 172 scale DML or Dragons Dragons version of this kit that actually had the similar moulded on and for the life of me I could not find anywhere that had it in stock do you know so again we're going to make do I might I might later on if I can get one and get one shipped quickly I might actually um, switch it out but I kind of want this build to be moving quickly because um, I'll get to it in a minute, but I'm, I'm going to be add, I'm going to be entering another another project project into this build later on, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, other things to uh, other things to note: uh, the rear escape hatch or loading hatch. Uh, this is a, a this is a separate piece. Now this is a separate piece, and it fits a bit a little bit off the model, so I had to cut it back the locating tabs, and a small bit of filling was needed. Uh, well, so, oh yeah, you can see I added a bit of four wedge. This is just a, a spare piece from an old fret for the machine gun swivel. As I, I would like to say, oh, I wanted to um, upgrade the piece, but in reality, I lost this. But uh, let's say we upgraded it for detail. That sounds much nicer. Yeah, I know details. You know, I had to do it, you know. But uh, no, unfortunately, the original piece went missing. So what I did was a. Uh, uh, we're in shot we are. I filled um, the locating tabs on the cupola top with uh, liquid green stuff uh, and then added this little piece of um, etch bar that I just had from an old fret. I also, if you, know, if you can see, I added a crewman. His head popping out. Now that crewman isn't, isn't, is not included in the kit. I added him myself and um, he is from Reveal's 172 scale Luftwaffer pilot and ground crew, crew set. Uh, I just picked a guy with um, the standard service cap, as in the side cap, 
and then I, I can't, uh, unfortunately I can't bring any colors for this, I want to, but watch what happens, see if we got this focus, I'll bring it back here lads, I'm sorry, but again, uh, when we do, I'll do another quick update, and I'll have the camera set up in such a way where the focus will be right in front of the vehicle, where we can, where we can see everything I've done, but uh, this is going to be a bit of a build video, so I kind of, I need, it, I need it, the angle back here, so I added, um, to make it more like a tank crew man, I added uh, the headphones that you often see tank crews, well, what tank crews wore back then. So I used a small amount of, actually I'll get it here, I can get my hands on it. I used this tiny little piece of bar I have left from an old evergreen set. I uh, just cut the shape and then for the head strap or for like the, uh, the strap for the, for the uh, headset I just used a piece of small tammy, tammy tape, cut the size and fixed in place. I know I'm pretty I'm pretty like I'm pretty liking that. I'm I'm happy I didn't have it buttoned up. Uh, and then what I did is I blanked the inside of the whole of the turret then with a piece of um, sheet. So when I spray that black you won't see like a a grey open grey interior like or empty interior should I say. That's fine, so that's the turret. I'm very happy with it. I still would have loved to add the simmer the simmers into it, but um because Cohen, I asked there, uh, Cohen was saying that all the uh, the tiger, all the King Tigers attached to 103 and at the time would have come with simmers as standard, which thank you so much too for that bit of information, which I will be using in maybe a later build, but unfortunately for this one, I'm sorry, but we just have to leave it off, because I, I like, if I'm going to add it, I might as well bin this model and buy one with actually with removable storage or removable Pioneer tools, and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to throw the away 20 euro. Uh, okay, here's some things to note. Um, I've been watching um, old Gits, Mike's um, build updates on, the, on this, or the, the build updates done on this, and he's basically ran into the same problems I have. Bit of fish issue on the rear plate. Uh, I have a seam down here that's what I have to fill, but it won't even matter, you won't be able to see it. Um, I also kind of almost snookered myself. The bow plate or the the um, the mount for the the bow machine gun is mounted from the inside of the vehicle out, but I didn't realise that looking at the at the um, at the instruction. So I I uh, bat, I glued down up or another hole to realise I couldn't fit the bloody thing. So what I had to do was I had to cut the two locating tabs off this part for for it fitting over the, over the from the rear. Then use the piece of wire with a piece of styrene sheet glued and then plugged the hole from the b behind and that was bloody a nightmare sorry keep in shot lads I'm sorry and then I had to uh, glue on th uh, put this down on top of it and do a bit of sealing work and then just add a bit of texture now again this texturing might be a bit heavy for for 72 scale or 76 scale but again I like it and at the end of the day this is about having fun you know um, like old gate I have run into trouble with the tracks. I had to staple mine. He said if he's already mounted his ones and you saying that uh there is no uh sag in these whatsoever, they're too tight. So either what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a few links out and then staple them again to give me the extra few link lengths or anything give you a uh shot again, I keep looking at the actual thing in my hand rather than the camera or, and then I probably won't be able to even paint the running gear separately and put this over it because he kept saying that the the elastic spring in this kept sh like pu pulling the running gear out so I'm gonna have, am I actually going to have to um, am I going to have to uh, basically uh, put this in situ and then put the uh, the running gear over it, which I haven't done in years, it's 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 not going to be a big problem, but it's going to be a bit of a pain in the arse, and it's going to mean that I'm not going to be able to detail the running gear as much as I'd like to, but again, we have to work around the kit's, kit's uh, limitations, if you will. Uh, also, another thing I noticed that it fits precariously tight in there. One of the few things that tight fit isn't a good thing. <laughs> but, um... As you can see here, watch, it's very, very tight. I'm, I'm a bit worried I might actually have to come in and trim a little bit of this back to make it fit more snugly without breaking anything. But uh, again, that's just the way it goes. So in all, it's an alright model. It's not great. But 
the more I try to do something with it, the more it begins to annoy me, and the more I'm beginning to think that if I can find um, if I can find a, a place that can ship to me relatively quickly, I'm going to get I'm going to switch this out for Dragons 72 scale instead. But um, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't want to give up on this model just yet. And speaking of dragon models, I am. I wanted to show you this. This is so. That's the same as the six scale, and here's the thirty-five scale. <laughs> oh god, that cracks me up every time. So this is the Heinzel tires, not the Porsche tires, but uh, same lower hull. So uh, yeah, it's a quite a big difference in the scales, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so now I've been watching Cohen's video. He's uh, he, he's man he's stash video if you will, and uh, now he was on about how um, he was trying to kind of give us a bit of a push to hopefully take on when we're done with our original entries, perhaps take a new entry on on different nationalities or try something a little bit differently so um, I am planning to do another build after this or during this once I clear the Panzer 1 and Striker I want them out of the way before I do it but it doesn't mean I can't order some and have a winner because again it's a 6 month build um, you say saying there's been very few Canadian and British pieces like okay, there's not that many German pieces, but uh, as you can see, like this is a German piece, and then Hannah Carr is doing one uh, old gist. So there's quite a few of us doing German stuff. There's not as much as Allies. Which is beyond usually probably the way around. But again, for Normandy, all all the some of the cool stuff is the Allied stuff, like all the specialist vehicles and whatnot. So I intend to do either. I don't know enough about Canadian armor in Normandy at the time, and I kind of want to do some out of the box. So I don't have to go buy in the aftermarket. So. I might do an Canadian piece, I might not. But I really want to do a, a, a Cromwell Centaur, or Centaur, which, or Centaur, which is, um, it's a Cromwell with like a 90mm close support cannon, which was attached to the Royal Marines. And like, I, I like all these kind of special operation style units, and uh, the, Royal, the Royal Marine Commandos were, well, they're the first of all the special forces, really. Uh, even they're they're even like they even go back before well, only a year or two before um, uh, Royal the SAS. So so uh, I'm gonna be building Tamiya Centaur in the future, or I will be trying my hand at maybe a Sherman. Um, I'm not sure that if I'm gonna do German armor or not. I I, I build a lot of German armor. Actually, I fried a little allied. So if I do do German armor, I would probably do a, a two five one half track. If I don't pick the Centaur or an M4 Sherman, I'd love to build a DD tank or a, a Crab in thirty five scale. As like I'm really fascinated with the uh, the DD tanks especially, but they are very expensive. I think only Resicast has re has released uh, one in thirty five, and Resicast are very very expensive. So we'll see what I'll be able to afford to do that. So when you put put the money in and do the conversion for buying the kit and then having to do the um, doing the uh, get buying the um, up resin upgrade, it can cost me a little bit too much and I'm a little bit strapped for cash. But again, I um I can I can't try to save up for it, and if I can't do it for this group, I'll do it for ISM's one. Um, that or I might do a diorama with Foster Maker. If you want to do the other. Um I'll get back to you on that. I'm just looking at the moment I'm just actually looking through kits online or should I say, uh before I came out to the shed I was just added the the, the gun sights for the for the uh the gunner. Just up here. So that's the terror's actually done. Uh what's to be done on here is to add the exhaust stacks, the guards for the exhaust and the jack. And that's done, and then it's down to running gear. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'll do a dry field of running gear first, and see can I get the the tracks over it without without it being spat out. And if not, I'll have to do them all in one piece. And I don't want to do it that way. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do another um, another entry 
but uh, it's either going to be the engineering vehicles, I'd say, or the German Royal Marines, one or the other. So I can see myself more doing the Royal Marines or a German piece, you know. Free French doesn't really interest me that much. Um, just doesn't. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to say what, that, what I want to say about it, but okay. Um, also, um, oh yeah, the, uh, I was watching some more of these videos as well. Um, about he's on about um, the discussion I had in my last uh, build vid uh, about like the morality of model making, which there is not really right or wrong, which is my opinion, and like you know I would never impose on anyone else. But it's still good to know that there's some very understanding people, uh, very empathetic people who who support each other during model builds, you know. And no, and you made a very good point. It's actually down just to responsibility. And I'd, I'd also, uh, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. And actually, I'd add another part of that. It's, it's down to maturity. That if it's not your thing, you can walk away without having to say anything negative about it. Because this is not your thing, and there's nothing wrong with it not being to your tastes. So there is no right or wrong. But if it isn't your thing, don't subject yourself to it. You know, we're all adults in the end of the day, or we're all mature enough to be adults at least. You know what I mean? And also to answer his question about did that film, did that chap make that diorama about Mamali? Uh, the answer is no. He did not in the end because he took so much flack that I actually even considered it bullying on the part of some of the people that they got. They they, they went too far with it. Like you know, it wasn't just it was no longer just making a point. So yeah, and like that, that's wrong. Like, you know, you, you can't do that to someone. Like it's their model. You have to let them build as they wish because someone will find it moving. Or, or poignant or something like that. Just because you don't doesn't mean you say you don't. But um, so that's, that's my little comment on that. So thank you all too for the support, and it's good to see that. Uh, uh, so far, I've seen all about understanding people who understand that, who support everybody f for regardless what they're making, even if it's not quite their thing. So that's that's a great show of maturity, lads, and you know, and I appreciate that. Um, I one of the lads actually left a comment kind of saying he's going to be adding Gore to his um, diorama. So that means he must be doing a cool something to do with Omaha Beach or something. Oh, it's Omaha Beach. Say it's Omaha Beach. Go on. But um, he said uh, that, uh, oh, I'll be putting Gore in like it or not. And I'm like, no, you don't, you don't have to defend it, mate. Never defend what you're going to build. It's either they like it or they can take a run and jump. It's one or the other, you know what I mean? So you never have to feel it. Um, defend what you're going to build, especially not to us my friends, you know, we're not, we're all, we're all, we're all in this together, like, so we're, we're going to support you either, buddy away. But uh, on that note, uh, if you want to do, like, blood and uh, gore effects, or just blood effects, um, and just, like, something to consider, because uh, I've done it once or twice before, especially with some Warhammer figures, you know, because, like, everything is gored up to the mass, as you know, you just have to running a chainsaw through someone, no, it's not going to, they're not going to be one piece by the end of it. Um, uh, so if you're doing like blood effects, stay away from flat reds. Th this is my uh, experience in it, and just something hopefully you might benefit from, uh, as it's too stark on the model, and what will happen is it'll draw too much attention away from your model. But bear in mind, if someone's bleeding, it's going to well, it's going to mix into their um, mix into their uniform. So it's not going to be as stark as some Hollywood movies would let you would have you, you know. I don't want to turn around and go oh, go on YouTube and look up boons because that's a bit. That's up to yourself, you know. I wouldn't. I would never order someone to do that because not not everybody wants to see that, and that's that's understandable, you know. But what I recommend is to use something like a brick red or a very rusty brown reddy color, and build it up in very thin layers. Um, I actually found that using burnt sienna oil or burnt sienna acrylic, and apply it in layers. It's very, very convincing. It's dark enough, but yeah, it's that red hue to it that's actually very convincing. Um, another thing maybe to consider, I haven't used it myself, but I've seen very good things on it, is Blood for the Blood God. Uh, it's one of uh, Citadel's um, new technical paints. Now, my, my views on technical paints is that they're stupid because uh, they're just trying to catch Connie all your money because you can make all the other crap yourself by just watering down paints. But they have one good paint, which is a blood effect, a gore effect called Blood for the Blood God. And it's a, a dark, opaque red with a glossy finish. So if you apply that in 10 layers, my friend, and build that up, but take your time building up. No, so tr 
try to manipulate and control it as much as possible so you get the finish you want. So I hope some of that might be useful to you. Um, if I can help you another way, just let me know. You know, like um, I'm not really an expert in this, but I know a little bit about D-Day and about equipment and shit like that. So um, if you need any help, I doubt you will, but if you do, just give us a shout. But and also, there's other great guys out there willing to help. So um, apart from that, uh, as some good news, I uh, sent off for a volunteer pack. So I, I'm going to be volunteering in the special. Well, hopefully, I, I'm not going to mention where or anything like that or any sense information but I plan to, I hope to be working in a special needs uh, centre in the next few weeks or months again I'm not going to say where just for security um, I don't know the policies because I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't fully been brought into it yet uh, okay, it'll take a few weeks for me to get my clearance um, I'm looking very forward to it because it's a career I want to work in um, so that's that's good news uh, so yeah I'm definitely going to be working on you know so um, that's really it now. I have very little, the very little work yet to be done on this. There's very little left. Just a few little bits and pieces, which I'll probably just do off camera because I have three minutes of memory left. So there's no little points, and it's going to chat to you for a while longer. Um, I hope all your builds are going well. I was looking at some more of the builds. I was watching Gab's launch video with Universal Carrier, which is pretty cool. I love the Universal Carrier. Oh, so that's the thing. Like you know of opening another project it's like oh what can I do like, I'd love to do one of like a hedgerow and Panzer Grenadiers or Faschemaker on one side of the hedgerow and Americans on the other or British on the other if it's Panzer Grenadiers and have them like locked in close quarter fighting as in like um, like chucking grenades through the hedgerows at one another and all this and showing like how showing how how these like close quarter fights and how people react under them It'd be interesting but uh, so when I'm looking at this it's like oh universal carrier and that's the first thing that came to mind having a universal carrier can hit up or coming like plowing through a bloody hedgerow or, or getting stuck in a hedgerow as lads pan trying to get out of fire but anyway I'm going off again um, so yeah Gav I'm looking really forward to see what you do with that mate um, it should be really cool I was watching old gates um, he's building the same kit as me so I'll be really looking forward to see what you do with that as well bud um, I'll be watching a few other builds as well I just can't think of the names my apologies my la mates you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to leave anyone out there's just so many, so many of us in the GB at the moment. You know what I mean? I'm quite new to all this, so I'm still getting, getting used to it. So um, I'm down to my last minute of memory, so I'm going to start logging off now. And just, uh, so I'm going to wish you all the best with your group builds. Can't wait to see your next updates, lads. Uh, keep safe. Uh, don't stick your hands into anything hot. And uh, you know what I mean? Watch out for them buses and uh, I'll be talking to you all very soon so stay safe be good to each other and I'll talk to you soon bye bye oi oi uh, long lance here or Shane um, just come on with a very quick update for Russell Gosling's uh, D-Day group build um, I said previously I was going to attempt to pony Simmers onto the Tiger but uh, Mr. Cohn kind of uh, said you could still put her on parts of the tank which he's right because a lot of uh, simmer used to uh, fall off the, the armour and all that and I was like grand challenge accepted I know he didn't mean it like that but uh, he could be persuasive in the nicest of ways but um, so uh, what I'm, I'm just going to give you a quick update before I start uh, as I mentioned in the last video I had textured the, the, um, the uh, vertical surfaces I'm going to leave that on because that's going to give some purchase for the putty to, to conform to. I still will be using the uh, liquid, Jesus, the uh, liquid green green stuff, um, but just applied like apply it with a a stir very thinly, and then I I'm going to make up a little tool and just uh, put the uh, impressions in. Uh, but since uh, I said I'd do some close-ups of the the um the the detail work I've done. So as you can see, I've uh, added a photo etch or a piece of scrap photo etch um for the uh, machine gun ring. You also have a very good view of the the commander. So he's going to be looking up at the aircraft as it dives out of the clouds or over the hedgerow towards him. Um, as I said earlier, so he's from a Ravel kit from a, a Luftwaffe um, pilot and ground coup. Crew, crew set, and you can see the uh, the headset I added, so just a bit of uh, 
um, styrene rod and tammy tape for the head, for the head strap. So I had a little bit, nice little bit of detail. I've uh, I've begun to mask certain areas where I don't want the pilot to go. So the uh, the upper part of the barrel is masked, and if I swing around back here, so just like the um, the bar for the uh, the exposed bar for the door, like swing, has been covered. I also added. It came with the kit, but uh, it popped off. I added the pistol port, as you can see there. To get the proper shape of that, I'm actually going to heat up one of my uh, old hobby uh, scalpel blades and um, melt it slightly to get that kind of buttoned look to it. As you, cause if you look at it, if you look at your reference photographs, it's it's slightly beveled or buttoned, so that's not that big of a deal. Okay, we'll have a quick look at the hole. So I'm going to work around the moulded on details, which is going to be a pain in the arse, but uh, I'll find a way. Um, so I've sealed off some other bits and pieces. I sealed off the um, the locating um, slot for the headlight, um, masked off the um, fenders and mud guards, and done a bit of masking with blue tack at the rear of the vehicle as well. And there we go. So um, that's really it. It's only a small update. Um, I was going to film me doing this, but um, I'm going to actually just film the result because I can imagine there might be a little bit of swearing in that video if things are going wrong. Um, so um, I've been catching up on a few more fits. Uh, I've been watching um, Frankie Day's B26 Marauder. It looks really, really cool. Um, really good job on that too. It's a cool looking airplane. I'm looking forward to see what he do, does with that. Um, I've been just kind of just kind of slowly getting getting to know everyone taking part. Um, so uh, it'll take me a little, a little another few days of trying through videos to get to know everyone's names. But don't worry, it's nothing personal. Yeah, but I'm really enjoying taking part in this. It's good crack. Um, oh, I was going to say there. Yeah, I have. Uh, door, I've yet to do my review of the Typhoon, which I'll be doing in the next day or two. It's just I really want to have, give a go with this. I get get the Tiger out of the way. And I also spent most of last night when I when I came out of the shed looking for a replacement for this tiger, and I could not find any any dragon tigers with similar on the market except Tiger ones. So if I want to do um, Panzer Air Aplon um, 101, I believe they all Tiger ones. I could easily have switched out my diorama, but I don't know if they got air attacked or not, but. I'd imagine if armor all over the Kong area operations is getting hit up by aircraft, there's no no, no way. That, there's no way. There's no reason to say not that um, that the other like Panzer divisions and battalions didn't get hit up either, which they did. Like they all did. Just some lesser than others, or less than others. Now I'm kind of rambling here a little bit, but that's just what I'm up to now at the moment. So I'm going to start working. And that is going to be so much fun trying to get around that. Lovely, like, but fuck it, we'll try it. And I swore again, damn it. I know. I do my best not to swear, but sure, what can you do? It's just some of us speak this way. So, it, it would be a bit of a challenge. Um, I'll add in where I can without losing detail. I'm a little bit worried about trying to put putty in between these little areas. And these are a little bit too figgly to mask, really. Like, if, if I blue tack mask these, they're just going to keep falling off every time I brush off them. And I really don't want to have to cut out tammy tape to have to fill it. So I'm just going to work around it, take my time. Um, I'm going to make up some tools from matchsticks and all that, just for spreading it around, you know. Because like, this is so, so small, like my trowels are way too big for this, you know. So yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Watch out for those buses. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.